Hey guys, I'm back. I know it's been a long time since I've been back uh, on uh, YouTube here, teach you guys how to use App Inventor. Uh, but quite frankly, I've been having a lot on my plate lately. I just haven't been able to get around to it. But I'm back. I got some free time finally after uh, going to school and work and well everything. So I'm gonna throw up a couple new videos here on uh, App Inventor. And one of the ones I've been repeatedly been getting axed over and over again is um, where I, I left off on the Amazon. Um, ad uh, uh, ads you can put on there and uh, quite frankly the best one you could do was ad mob but uh, you really weren't, weren't able or to actually um, uh, I want to say legally but like you know through their contract of using uh, Google Ads you weren't actually allowed to use a Google Ad you actually had to use ad mob which was not allowed on App Inventor and still isn't but uh, through some digging that I did recently, which I knew this was out for a while, but it was just really hard to use and operate, and there wasn't a host server, and a bunch of other things. And it just didn't work smooth, so I just never really came around to actually putting a video on it. But uh, when I came back, and I kind of uh, dug into it, because uh, when I went back to look into YouTube, saw a lot of comments about it, I said, oh, what the heck, might as well go back and uh, see if, uh, if it was updated. And uh, to my surprise, and... I found out that it actually is uh, updated and actually does work very well. Um, it's uh, I don't know if it was created by this guy, but um, it's on his blog, and uh, basically it's AI Live Complete. It's a uh, software you might see his video online, but he's not very descriptive of uh, you know how it really works or operates. So I'm going to kind of go over the basics and exactly what it is. Uh, to what I understand, basically they took the software, the APK an SDK that they got from MIT App Inventor which is a free software I don't know if they were allowed legally to take the software and change it for themselves but it doesn't look like they're making any money or any profit off of it so it looks like it's just a revamped version of it uh, with a lot more features um, than you would get on the other one now I would highly recommend using um, actual App Inventor from MIT I feel a lot safer using it they have a term of agreements and servers and they won't sell you things and blah 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 so I wouldn't want you to actually do all the designing on here but I think it's a great tool that if you either download their APK and uh, do it offline or in other terms you use their host server and just upload your files on there for a quick second to add on your ads and then take your work off of there um, I think it's a great tool in that respect and I don't think anything's really gonna be lost in the long run with that so that being said, um, basically where I found it was at this blog, I'll go ahead and uh, throw the link down there for you, uh, which then kind of you know kind of goes an overview of it. A little bit hard to understand him, uh, but uh, all in all, it seems like a you know, pretty interesting thing. It's exactly the same, just got more features built into on the sidebar that we saw on the old App Inventor. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, basically I follow through the links and like I said it's kind of hard. It takes you here and then it shoots you over to this right here which is um, a, uh, another website, well Google Docs, not really a website. And basically you know directions and what it can do and stuff like that. And you know it's got more features for uh, you know uh, add mob, add Amazon full screen interface, mob fox. A lot of other monetizing apps on there that they built into here. Some toggle buttons, horizon, uh, horizontal and vertical scroll view. So a bunch of different little things that they put in here. But um, it, it, you know, all in all, it, it's very cool. Um, I just don't know a lot about it to fully trust it. But at the same time, you know, I think it is worth to trust it. I mean, besides doing my way at the Amazon, which is, you know, it works, but it's it's a pain in the butt, let's be honest. The guy's got to go in there and then buy the product for you to even make a commission off of it. And really, do you think anybody's really going to, you know, buy product off of Amazon and uh, do it all on their phone on a small screen like that? I don't think so. So, um, you know, you can make a few bucks here and there, but, you know, where the real money is is that I'm actually clicking on an ad from an ad mob within an app and then show you the move to a website. So uh, go ahead. You're gonna click on here, blah blah. blah. You, I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna give you the blog. You can get to here, and then I'm also gonna give you just straight to the host server, um, which you will log on like you would with App Inventor. And um, let's go. That this is where you can download. I'll put this link down here. You can download it and actually have it on your own computer and actually use it offline. 
I think originally it was called App Inventor Offline, and that's where people actually you know started taking APK and SDK and actually turning it around and actually uh, you know putting in their own type of uh, little niches into the actual program. So now here you go, and, and right here, right off the bat, you can tell that this is something you don't see on um, App Inventor uh, 2.0. You, you don't you don't see a monetizing um, thing right now. Uh, selection here toolbar. I mean look you get add Amazon, add Amazon, Air Nash, uh add mob, uh M Media. I don't even know what these are. Mob Fox, I'll I'll look them up and I'll definitely look into, you know, what their percentage is for clicking on them. But um I really know I think the the most commonly used one and the one I know that's on um, basically everything is add mob. So uh and it's very simple. I'm going to go into all these other things. I'm going to, you know, do multiple videos on all the other tools that they got going on here. Um, you know, Gallery Viewer. I don't remember seeing that on the last one. Toggle. I think that, that was added on later. Um, VSV Arrangement. I, I, I'm guessing um, you can use your finger to actually move images across. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to get into all this in other videos and kind of really work through them. Um, if you see anything here that you actually want to... Uh, you know, add in yourself. Just let uh, you know, they want me to actually go in full depth. Just let me know in the comments. I'll definitely go into it. So they've got proximity sensor. I don't remember that sound sensor, temperature uh, temperature sensor, um, uh, invisible component measures temperature on the device in Celsius. Apparently, I mean, I knew phones had temperature sensors, but I mean, apparently this actually logs into it and actually can tell you the temperature because. Um, the phone actually does record temperature, not a ambient temperature. It records the phone's temperature. Um, that's for safety reasons. That way, if the phone, for some reason, starts you know processing way too much, or, uh, making you know turn off kind of like a BIOS on a computer, it gets too hot, turns it off. But uh, um, I didn't know you can actually read that. But that was something you know deep inside the system that you weren't allowed to see. But apparently, you can. Uh, proximity sensor. Once again, I'm guessing that's the one on your, your head of your phone. Yeah, your sound sensor. I'm just kind of like listing out things that here that I knew that I, I haven't seen before on the last one. And it looks like everything on here. I don't think I remember seeing a, a file component. I think that one that one's new to this. I'll look into that. Activator, Bluetooth client. We've seen all those. The Legos. Uh, charts. I don't remember this. I, this looks. XY component charts lets you blah 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 blah. Well, that must be added by them because I don't think an MIT people from App Inventor would actually put blah blah blah. In it. But uh, whatever it is, looks pretty cool. Probably just some kind of like uh, monetizing apps again. And then you got your uh, advanced. Looks like Dropbox, Kitchen Sink, and uh, SQ Lite, which I know Dropbox, Kitchen Sink. I think I think it is just like a um, just like. Uh, Dropbox, if I'm not mistaken. And SQLite. Yeah, private database. So I'm guessing they're all like Dropbox kind of components uh, that you can add in, which I mean is really cool. Uh, but uh, what, like you had, you're ready here for the ad um, mob adver uh, advertising. So uh, go ahead. And the reason why I've been adding a lot into it is because really it's quite simple. I mean, I would take your um, app inventor file that you would find from App Inventor here. You would go ahead and save your projects, so project, save project, then you go into my projects and then you would export it. Or so you can export it as a A uh, A I A to your computer. And then what you would do here is back in at uh, AI2 Live Complete, you would then uh, go ahead and go to project import AIA from the computer. I mean, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have a file to import that I really need to do this right now. But um, this is, you know, something that I, I hope you guys know how to do was save a file and reopen it. Um, but simply save, uh, export, and then import um, it into here. It would open it up just like it would in the App Inventor, and then click Add Mob and bring it over. And drop it in and then basically over here you're gonna have uh, you know your actual components here so like add is enabled check mark um, go ahead and uh, put your uh, a 
add unit ID. So this would be like um, if you already signed up for AdMob, you would know that you have an ID. You put that in there. Go ahead. Uh, and that way then when they click on that, it kind of toggles back to you and says, well, listen, this number so-and-so. It wouldn't be like a username. It would be like a series of like letters and numbers. And that will toggle back to your actual AdMob account, which is connected to your AdSense account. Um, it's a long chain, but it gets you there. And uh, you go ahead, put that in there. That will link you back. Target age, you know, target gender. You know, you can put like multiple on here, and uh, you can actually read the target age and target gender from it. And then go ahead and uh, you know, make sure that the ads pop up to what you want them to actually pop up. And then you know, showing is visible and so on. And I would guess when you go into the block editor, you can then click on Add Mob, and this, these, this, those things I just listed off on there, you could actually change. So probably like you know, add you know, add close, collapse it, expand it, uh, add fail to launch, load add, pause add, resume add. You know, it looks like you know, basically you can, you can toggle things like this. Let me know if you want me to actually like, go into like more of this kind of stuff. But I'm guessing like if, you know, you know, when add. You know, well, I have it visible now, so I went and went turn it again. But I would say like control. Let's see what I can do here quickly. Screen one. When it initializes, say like I didn't have it initialized. I want my visibility. You know, here, and then I'll go to logic, and then I make it true. So now, you know, if I didn't already have it enabled, I would have it enabled now. And then I can go in here and then I could, you know, change the, you know, gender. You know, like, you know, I don't know, picks up on a phone and, you know, some girls on it, you know. And uh, you, you figure, you know, uh, you do some type of uh, initial thing when you do, let's say, like a, a Facebook or a Twitter or some type of thing that, you know, has to do with that. And you say, well, you know, what, what gender are you? And they say female. Well, then you can link that female toggle to that button and send that to your ad. So then, therefore, on that ad will only present female ads. You know, what have you be that you know Google Ad Mom, de you know, decides to put on your ads for for women. You know, and vice versa. A guy clicks on it. You know, I'm a guy for this app. Therefore, you know, only guy related ads will set up there. And then that's a good feature to have because. You know, you're not going to want to, you know, be selling uh, perfume to a guy. You know, it's not going to, not going to have a likely click on that. But you know, if you, you know, he's a guy, and then, you know, some new video game comes out, you're gonna definitely going to go out there, and that target age group is going to move up. Or you ask them what age they are, you know, for the app, that automatically then gives you their age, and you go, well, you know, you know, he's, you know, 42 years old. He's not going to want the video games. He's going to want something else. So my target range is going to be higher up. And uh, we're only going to give ads out about that. So you, you can link all the stuff together, you know, and initialize it then, therefore, on with all your presets. And that's what really makes an efficient ad campaign. I mean, really, when I was doing my other, you know, uh, ads on here, even when I, you know, was using the, uh, the really, really old way before uh, Google didn't allow you to actually put uh, straight ads from Google Ads onto your, um, onto your app, um, I would have to create a website then view that website with a small box and then that small box would view the ad and then they would click the ad through there and then go to the ad. Long, stupid way of doing it and in the long run they didn't even know who you were. They wanted to know who you were but they couldn't because you were going to a small web page. So guys, that's it. Uh, I'm going to go into more detail. I'm going to Maybe make a small, you know, little app on here later on. Let me know what kind of features you want me to put in there. I mean, I'll go crazy, you know. You come up with something stupid that, you know, just tells different temperatures and, you know, shit like that. I don't give a fuck, but, you know, uh, just let me know and uh, I'll put it in there. Uh, so, like, rate, subscribe. See you guys later.